Hello everyone, I'm Guglielmo Fagioli, a PhD student from the University of Padova, and I'm here to present you a joint work with uh, Dr. Mirko Polato and Professor Fabio Ioli. The work is entitled The Recency Aware Collaborative Filtering for Next Basket Recommendation. First of all, let me introduce you the task. Our task was a next basket prediction. This means that we were given with the content of, um, of the contents of the baskets the user previously bought in her history, and we have to predict the content of the next basket uh, the user will buy. Mm, additionally, we were set in a very specific setting, the one regarding grocery shopping. The grocery shopping has some peculiarity. First of all, it is linked to the satisfaction of uh, human essential needs, such as drink, eat, or uh, personal hygiene. Because of that, it is very likely that uh, an item that is, has been bought once uh, will be needed by the user again in future, and thus will be bought again. This is different from many other settings where recommender systems are employed, where uh, once an item has been bought or consumed, it is less likely that uh, it will be bought or consumed again in future. An RS system, a recommender system in this setting, uh, might be very important. First of all, because it works as a reminder. The user might use the, um, the recommender system as a, um, as a grocery list and uh, might inspect it to decide what to buy and uh, to, as a reminder of what she needs in her uh, let's say kitchen or uh, in general in the home. Additionally, the um, recommender system uh, is very important in, in this specific setting since it introduces diversity. Users in this specific setting tend to be very repetitive and uh, very loyal towards specific brand. By using a recommender system, we can um, suggest um, the user new items that she might be interested into and she might decide to, to switch or modify her tastes um, considering our recommendation if she trusts our, our recommender system. This specific setting has two main problems which make it uh, difficult to produce good uh, recommendations. First of all, it is multi-people. This means that often a user that goes to do his uh, or her grocery is not uh, interested in, the, in a single type uh, of, uh, of uh, items. Uh, let's say a user is doing their shopping for her entire family, so she might uh, have a vegan daughter and she might to buy, need to buy something for, for her, but her son might be celiac and um, she might need something gluten-free and uh, her husband might be a very um, passionate fish lover and uh, he, she might need to buy something to satisfy also him. So um, when we have to produce a recommendation for a specific user, we have to take into account that uh, she might have uh, different uh, people in her, in her mind doing uh, the shopping. Additionally, it's multitask. This means that the user, when do her, she do her grocery shopping, is not uh, thinking to a specific task such as uh, only the dinner, um, to, to buy food for the dinner, but she might also thinking about uh, um, uh, the products, products to organize um, a party during the weekend. So the content of the basket might be very disomogeneous. Given these uh, characteristics, uh, one of the strongest baseline is the user-wise popularity. The user-wise popularity is defined as the frequency with uh, which an, a specific item is bought by the user. Uh, so let's say the number of baskets uh, the item is uh, bought by the user, the item is found in, divided by the total number of baskets. The user-wise popularity has uh, three main features that makes it so, so such a strong baseline. First of all, it doesn't consider a specific uh, person's taste. We don't have to model the, per the user as a vegan or a celiac or um, as a fish lover, but rather we consider simply what she buys. Additionally, it, it uh, ignores uh, relations between uh, um, products uh, that are bought uh, together. We simply consider what uh, have been bought, so we, in this way we solve the problem of um, multitask uh, shopping and uh, we can um, consider only what the user is uh, actually buying. Finally, it ignores rare purchases. Let's say a user buys something because it's in discount or uh, uh, because she has a particular need and she won't buy such product again, 
if uh, she doesn't bite uh, again, then uh, the score will be likely very um, low, and thus uh, we want um, our results won't be affected by rare purchases. Another uh, very important aspect in, in this specific setting is the recency. Recency can be defined as the last time a, a user bought a specific item. So let's say if uh, an item has been bought really recently, then it is likely that we, it will be bought again uh, in, in future. But uh, if uh, it is uh, the last time the item was uh, bought, uh, it's uh, many baskets uh, away from uh, the current basket, then it is less likely that uh, the user will buy against such item. Considering the recency, we can grasp uh, these uh, two, for example, we can grasp these two, two patterns. The first pattern dec describes an item that wasn't present uh, into the catalog until day 300, and then it suddenly was added, and we can see that uh, the recency is able to, um, to find that a new item has been added to the, the catalog, or the second pattern describes an item that was uh, present to the catalog, but then uh, suddenly, around day, day 200, it was removed. Considering the recency, we can define the recency-aware user-wise popularity. The recency-aware user-wise popularity is, uh, is defined as the number of baskets into a specific uh, window, or into a specific number of uh, baskets starting from the, the basket we are considering, um, that contains a specific item divided by the number, the, 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 the dimension of the recency window size. This um, is particularly, particularly strong measure in this specific task, since it, it encodes both the aspects related to the, to the recency, but also the, the aspects related to the user-wise popularity, since uh, it um, keeps track of the number of time a specific item has been bought. Considering the recency aware um, user-wise popularity, we can define two main uh, collaborative filtering approaches to the, to the task. The first is the item-based collaborative filtering. The item-based collaborative filtering defines, uh, first of all, a similarity measure between items and then uh, computes the score as a um, weighted sum of all possible um, possible items, the popularity of all possible items. The similarity we, is, we considered is the asymmetric similarity. This is very uh, very useful. Um, the fact that uh, the similarity is uh, asymmetric is very important in this specific task. Consider, for example, the fact uh, since uh, two items are not, uh, might not be thought as uh, um, symmetrically similar. Consider, for example, the fact, uh, the fact that uh, the user buy, um, let's say, tofu. This might uh, give us uh, information on the fact that she's vegan and thus uh, she will probably buy uh, also fresh uh, vegetables. On the other hand, if the user buy um, fresh vegetables, this doesn't uh, give much information on the fact that she's vegan and thus won't suggest that uh, she will um, uh, she will buy tofu. So observing tofu gives us information on, on vegetables, but uh, it's not uh, so straightforward, straightforward the other way around. Additionally, in the item-based uh, collaborative filtering score, uh, you can see that the weighted sum um, contains also a locality parameter here, here indicated with the letter Q, which, is, uh, um, which we use to exponentiate the similarity. This locality parameter is um, between, uh, we tried it between one and uh, um, in general plus infinite, and uh, the bigger it is, the less likely we are to trust in the, um, in the similarity. So, uh, for example, if, uh, since the similarity is uh, between zero and one, if this number uh, is uh, infinite, then uh, in the, um, the similarity we will consider into the formula will be zero. In, instead, if it's one, the similarity will, will be exactly the, the, the value we considered. The similarity score is then used to, to weight the user-wise popularity, or in general, the recency-aware user-wise popularity. 
Similarly to the item-based uh, uh, collaborative filtering, we defined also a user-based collaborative filtering. In this case, we didn't uh, consider the um, baskets uh, to define the similarity, but we considered the, the um, set of uh, items the user has bought in her entire history. Again, we used a um, symmetric measure, and uh, as before, we computed the, the user-based uh, collaborative filtering score as a weighted sum of the user-wise uh, popularity for a specific sum, weighted by the similarity um, of the um, user with those other users that bought the, the same item, um, exponentiated to um, a locality parameter. To evaluate our assistance, we considered uh, two, two data sets. Uh, one, uh, in, they are very commonly used data set in this specific task. One is Instacart and the second one is Dunhamby. Uh, we considered uh, these two, um, two data sets since they provide us um, diversity into our analysis. As you can see, Instacart is a very big data set with many users but uh, small, um, in, on average, small basket. On the other end, Dunhamby contains uh, less user, but with uh, very big uh, baskets. Uh, additionally, we selected the uh, item, uh, we removed items that weren't, weren't uh, present in more than five, uh, five baskets. To evaluate uh, our system, we adopted um, this uh, specific uh, methodology. First of all, we split the, our uh, data set into two parts, one used for validation and one used um, for, for test. All the baskets uh, previously to the last one, in the, um, without considering the length, uh, the number of baskets was considered as training set and our uh, computation was used to evaluate uh, the, um, the results only on the, the last baskets. To have um, trustworthy results, we rep repeated uh, this uh, split, uh, splitting 50 times, and we computed uh, the, the results on the test set uh, 50 times and averaged uh, over, over all, the, all the results. As you can see here, you can uh, observe the, um, uh, the parameters we, we tried uh, to, um, to evaluate our, our techniques. These are the results, uh, the different uh, methods uh, achieved on the um, Instacart uh, dataset. The first uh, five are traditional um, baselines, so the global popularity of uh, I the items, the user-wise popularity, uh, the item-based uh, collaborative filtering, and the user-based. Uh, FPMC and uh, T2V uh, plus AIDA are uh, two state-of-the-art techniques. The first uh, is a um, technique based on the well-known um, BPR uh, optimi optimization criterion, while the second uh, is uh, based on building a representation of uh, the items and the user, uh, which um, the complete name is uh, triple to vec and uh, is uh, somehow similar to the um, uh, the word to vec uh, algorithm uh, where um, we have uh, triples of uh, item item and the user and we try to build a representation for them finally the last three results uh, are uh, associated to our uh, methods uh, the user wise popularity with the recency windows uh, the item-based uh, popularity with a uh, recency windows and the user-based um, collaborative filtering uh, with a uh, recency window. As you can see, the user-based method achieves uh, the best results. Uh, FPMC has an um, asterisk since uh, the, um, uh, the computation didn't end in uh, um, 24 hours of, com of computation. These are the results on the Nambi, which are very similar. Here also you can observe, um, as in the previous data set, that the user-wise popularity itself is a very strong uh, method and a very strong uh, baseline that uh, achieves uh, very good results. But um, the user-based method, again, is able to, to over overcome all the other methods. 
In conclusion, we presented a collaborative filtering framework for Nest Basket uh, recommendation that relies on the user-wise popularity, which is uh, known to be a very important measure, and the considered recency windows. Our future work uh, foreseen to include uh, into our analysis uh, the um, aspects related to the temporal um, uh, to the temporal relation between con consecutive both between uh, consecutive both of uh, a single item. Thank you very much.